This is Jack Jackson back again. In this video, we're going to talk about how we can find parameters for continuous distributions, or at least approximate them very well, with a graphing calculator if we know the formula for the PDF. Okay, so let's look at an example here. Uh, well, let's look at an exponential example. So the PDF is uh, PDF of x is lambda e to the minus lambda x for x greater than or equal to 0 and 0 for x's that are less than 0. So what we would like to do is to show that this is a legitimate PDF graph. Well, to show that it's a PDF graph, uh, at least for lambda, let's do lambda as 0.1. If lambda is any positive number, this will be a legitimate PDF graph. Well, to show that, let's look at the Inspire first. So let me just uh, let me clear out some stuff here. Okay, start with the clean screen here. Now we can show this is a legitimate PDF. Number one, by looking at the graph and seeing that the y values are always on or above the x-axis, and they're zero to the left of the x-axis and positive to the right. And then we want to make sure that when we integrate this or, or find the area here, all the area of the graph. So we put the PDF function here. This should be 1. So this is e to the power negative 0.1x dx. And the part of the graph that has a non-zero probability is from 0 to infinity. Now on the Inspire cast, I can actually go down here and enter in infinity. And in fact, it will figure it out and shall tell me that it's exactly 1. Now I can more or less do the same thing on the TI-84. Okay, start with a clean screen here. Okay, I can enter more or less the same thing, but I can't enter in infinity. So I can what I can do is put in some large number. And hopefully we get this to be approximately 1. And I think on this one, 300 actually works pretty good. So you can do math 9, and we want to go from 0 to uh, 300. We put in our formula here, which is 0 0.1 uh, e to the power negative 0.1x dx. And this should be at least approximately 1. Yeah, technically it's a little under one, but it's but it's probably .9999999. I don't know how many nines. Probably more nines than this would have digits in the calculator. So any amount that this, any area that's that's to the right of 300, it's not zero, but it's practically zero. It's so small that it doesn't affect the digits that would show on the calculator. So the calculator really can't tell that apart from uh, that area between 0 and 300, it really can't tell it apart from 1. So that's that's a pretty good indicator there that that is a legitimate uh, PDF graph. Now, let me go ahead, and the other thing that we need to have, let's go ahead and put the formula in here as uh, 0.1 e to the power negative 0.1x, okay? And let's go ahead and get a decent window. It needs to start at zero. Let's go. Hmm. Let's go out 50. And maybe we'll mark it off in fives or something. And it needs to go up to the highest it's going to get is 0.1. So I, I might as well just start at 0.1. And then uh, I don't need to uh, let me go like a tenth of that, 0.01 here. Okay, not bad looking looking graph there. Notice the y values are always above the axis from x positive and x negative. Uh, the y values are actually just zero. So those are the two conditions: the area has to be one, and the and the graph is always above or on the x-axis. All right, so now with that in there, I could have I could have done this by math 9, uh, 0 to 300, 
and here I could have just put y1 of x or just y1 and again this is going to work out to be at least approximately 1 okay so that's a that's a good indication that's the right thing now let's go back to the slideshow those are some of the screens that you just saw now let's use the the calculator to find the mean of the distribution now remember the mean of a distribution is the expected value of x. Well, what does that mean? Well, think about what it meant back in the discrete case. In the discrete case, that meant we took the x times the PDF and we summed it up with a capital sigma, summed it up for all x's. Well, summing up in the continuous case is this integral sign. It's this long skinny s for summing. So we're summing the x times the PDF of x. Uh, the dx is just telling us that's our variable and we sum it all the way negative infinity to infinity. Now from negative infinity to, inf to zero, x is zero and the PDF of x, I mean, x is not zero, but the PDF of x is zero. So there's nothing to add up there. So we're really just summing up from zero to infinity in this case. So it's x times our PDF of x formula. In this case, it turns out to be 10. Well, let me show you how we can get that from our calculator. Now this is gonna be the mean, okay? So whatever gave me a 1 here, I can go second enter, get it back. Now watch this. This is slick. Get right here and go to insert, which is second, delete right here, insert, insert an X times. And this is going to be my answer. In fact, I'm even going to store it as alpha M. So now when it comes back, even if it's got a lot of decimals, I know it's, it's M. So M is the mean and it's 10. And it's slick. Okay. Then what can I do with that? Uh, well, let's just leave that there for a second. Let's do it with the uh, Inspire. Okay. So I can I can go back up here and highlight that and hit Enter. And I want to go back here and put uh, well X times and it's best if I put that in parentheses like that and integrate it from all there and we get 10. And again, if I wanted to, I could do something like say store that is maybe as mu, mu. That's the mean. All right. Now, that's the expected value of x or the mean. So it's pretty easy to compute. Uh, with that area calculator. Now, what this is, it's, a, it's an area also under some other curve, not the PDF curve, but x times the PDF, which gives us a new curve. We don't need to visualize it. We just need to compute it, and this, this computes it for us. Now, once you have the mean, we can now talk about the variance. Now, remember, the variance is the expected value of x minus mu square. So we're integrating x minus mu square times the PDF of x. So in this case, all x's is just from 0 to infinity. So we're doing this integral. Turns out it's 100. Let me show you that. Whoops. Let me show you that from the, uh, let's do the Inspire first. Okay, so I can go back to here, copy that, and uh, just, uh, uh, yeah. Pull that back, and then what I want to do is now is I want to take this and put parentheses around that x, and then say minus mu, close parentheses, and square that times the PDF of x. Integrate it from all x's and enter. And there's our standard deviation. And of course, you can do square root of that answer. And that's, that's our, the, the 100 is the variance. The square root of that is the standard deviation. Okay, same thing on the TI-84. Once I have this in there, go second entry. I've already got that stored as M for the mean. And so insert here parentheses. Go over one more. Insert a minus. The mean was stored as alpha M, close parentheses, square. Okay, so it's X minus the mean square times Y1. Of course, you have to find the mean and put it in M first. And then these same limits should 
should work or at least approximately work. Now this one is approximately 100. It didn't come out perfectly. I might be able to take this this thing here and go a little further. This may work. I don't know if this will work or not. Let's see. Instead of go out to 300, let's go a little further. What if we try 400? Did it come out to be exactly 100? Oh, it messed up. Actually, it screwed up. It gave us something that was completely not good. So that's not a good thing. Okay, that's a calculator glitch there. So whatever we were using before that got us to 1 uh, on the other example, that's what we want to use here. And it's, it's approximately 100 anyway. So that... What in the world? Why is that not? Oh, I've, I've stored it as M, so it's changing M every time. Uh, that's the problem. Let's try that. So 10 was M, so let's store that back as M. I didn't mean to do that part of it. Now let's go to... Okay, we don't want the store M. Let's get rid of that. That's what kept, kept messing it up. Kept changing the M. Didn't mean for that to happen. Now let's see what happens if I make this 400. It come out to be 100. Should be 100 or real close. Yeah, it's 100. So that's good. And then if I take the square root of that answer, of course, that's my standard deviation. I could do it by my head in my head, but that's that's 10 for that. Okay. So, that's how you find the mean and the standard deviation if you know the PDF. So, notice you have to know the PDF, not the CDF, to do this. Um, so, uh, it's really nice to be able to find, if you, need it, if you need it, you may not always need it, but if you need the mean and standard deviation of a distribution, you can find it pretty easily if you know the formula for the PDF.